you know, consumers' propensity and confidence in the economy has been falling off a cliff. You know, the month over month change was almost, uh, it was down 8.2%. The annual inflation rate for the U.S. is 7.5% for the 12 months ended January 2022. This figure is the highest the country has recorded in four decades. In a few weeks, the U.S. Labor Department is scheduled to release the next inflation update on March 10, 2022, but there is little hope that the figure will go lower. In addition, consumer sentiments are at a multi-year low as a result of the disparity between inflation and income increase. In a recent interview, three brilliant minds have shared their thoughts about these developments and their effects on the U.S. economy. Social Capital's Chamath Palahapitiya, Kraft Ventures David Sachs, and David Friedberg of the Production Board talk about inflation, recession, and the next step for the economy of the United States. Welcome to Savvy Finance. In this video, we examine the thoughts of three leading figures in the investment world on inflation and recession in the United States. Please ensure you watch the video to the end and hit the like button if you find it insightful. Thanks for your continued support. Chamath Palahapitiya is a venture capitalist and the founder and CEO of Social Capital. Along with entrepreneur and internet tech firm investor David Sachs and founder and CEO of the production board, David Freeberg Chamath talks about inflation in the United States and what the government needs to open up the economy. Quoting a recent tweet from Zero Hedge, Sachs explains that inflation keeps rising without a corresponding increase in income. As a result, the general population has to cough up more money to buy essential goods. Yet, their wages are not growing at the same rate, causing a drastic drop in consumer sentiments. He traces the problem back to the government monetary policies in 2020, which ironically ended up causing the problems they were supposed to prevent. Here is the entrepreneur's explanation of the issue. Okay, there was a really interesting chart on inflation that actually Zero Hedge tweeted, and um, I threw it up in the notes here, where they said real hourly earnings are negative 1.7%. It's the 10th month in a row where U.S. incomes aren't keeping up with inflation. So the problem here is that, you know, people's incomes have increased with inflation, but not as much as the inflation rate. So the net effect of it is that people are feeling worse off. When they go to the grocery store to buy groceries or whatever they need, they don't feel as rich. That's the fundamental problem here. And I think there's a lot of people out there who think that there's a free lunch, that if we printed $2 trillion worth of stimmy checks, this is the whole, that $2 trillion bill last year that they shoveled through. I think the idea was, we're going to print as much money as we can before the election, and it's going to help us in the midterms. Actually, as it turns out, it boosted inflation so much that people are feeling worse off, even though their wages went up slightly, because on a net basis, their earnings are down. So I just think it's a good reminder that um, you can't just like print uh, wealth. You can't print your way to prosperity. No free lunches? There's no free lunches. Yeah. Or we're going to create addiction to universal income or universal subsidy. Um, that's the alternative is people are going to basically try and vote to make some programs that were initially meant to be temporary more permanent in order to keep up the, uh, the lifestyle that they've been become accustomed to. Shamath expounds on Sachs's point by quoting data from the University of Michigan. The Canadian explains that all major indicators for measuring consumer sentiments are down. He also explains that the government needs to open up the market to foster a consumer-led rebound which could turn things around. But that is not going to happen amidst the continued fears of interest rate hikes and strict COVID restrictions. Listen to Chamath's and Sachs' explanation on the issue and the way forward for the economy of the United States of America. Just, uh, just to build on Sachs' point, uh, the University of Michigan uh, consumer sentiment was released, I think it was today, this morning. And it shows exactly what he's saying, which is that, you know, consumers' propensity and confidence in the economy has been falling off a cliff. You know, the month over month change was almost, uh, it was down 8.2%. The year over year change is down almost 20%. Current economic conditions was down 20%. And then index of consumer expectations down 19%. So to, to Sachs's point, people are scared. Yeah, well, we've been, we've been talking on the show for the last, I'd say, a couple of months about balancing the risk of recession versus the risk of inflation. Inflation, I think, has gotten slightly worse. It, the print went from the last print was like seven point one percent. Now it's seven point five percent. So to Jamal's point earlier, it's getting worse, but the rate of how fast it's getting worse is Could slowing. Be peaking. But the risk of recession, I think, is increasing because what's keeping this economy going is the consumer. And if the consumer sentiment now all of a sudden is tanking and people feel poor because of inflation. I just, you know, now the, the, the risks are starting to become well, more balanced. Sentiment, as sentiment goes down, this is where governors play a critical role, because if they don't open up these economies, we can't actually have a consumer-led consumption rebound of the economy because there aren't any services to buy because you can't actually be around anybody. 
So if the economy remains effectively closed and people are done buying, you know, tubs of margarine and toilet paper, uh, because, you know, Armageddon isn't coming as we were worried it would, what are we supposed to be doing? So this is how these things interplay. So we have to get these, again, going back to where we started, we have to get this economy open and we have to just get back to some sense of normalcy and the consumer will lead us out. But I think, Sachs, you're right. On the margin, I think the risk is towards a recession because people don't see this. Thomas Sowell, who's a well-known Stanford, he's a, I think he's a senior fellow at, at Hoover. Um, you know, he, he has this comment, which is effectively taxes are bad for the rich and the poor, but inflation is bad just for the poor. And the reason he says that is because, you know, if you're wealthy, you can transition to assets that are sort of inflation adjusted or inflation protected, right? You can consume assets or you can purchase assets to protect yourself. But inflation is an ex exceptionally regressive means of the government taking compensation away from you, current compensation, and it disproportionately affects working class ordinary people. And so if you have real wages that are negative, inflation that's high, that's confiscatory, right? It, you, are, you are meaningfully less well off than you were before. And, you know, the wealthy folks have a way to hedge, but normal ordinary working class people do not. And on the margin, then, if they then do not go out and spend, the problem will be some sort of recessionary effect. I think history is going to be really judgmental of Biden if he is the last person to basically give the green light and all of these Democratic governors basically revolt and open up under underneath, you know, uh, either silence or the complete opposite point of view. This is a really right. bad setup. Well, National Journal, which again is not some right wing publication, they're just sort of a, a, an analyst of what's happening in Washington, said that Biden had an article, Biden is blowing his COVID moment. He was elected to lead us back to normalcy. All he had to do was say, guys, it's time for the restrictions to come off and take credit for the fact that we were, that the whole country was ready to move on. And he's kind of missed it. And, uh, but this, this trucker convoy that's coming to Washington gives him one more chance, I think, to get on the right side of this because. There's really two ways he can react. One is to treat them as, you know, domestic terrorists, you know, racist, white supremacists, insurrectionaries, or he can, you know, embrace them. Yeah, and constituents. Say, all he has to do is say, listen, we love you. We respect you. We hear you. We agree with you. It's time for these mandates to end. And you know what? Thank you, Rachel Walensky and Anthony Fauci for your service. We understand you're just trying to keep the country safe. But thank you very much. We're ready to move on. We're getting rid of all these restrictions. His popularity would like bounce five points, 10 points if he did that. With inflation at 7.5% and many economic signals showing signs of trouble, whether the Fed tightens or not, things have pretty much come to a head. The following weeks, the Biden administration is going to have to take some carefully measured steps to slowly turn things around, starting from relieving some restrictions, driving further fear in the minds of the average consumer. As Chamath explains, the rich can easily get by during these crucial times, but the average worker has to bear the full blast of it all. Yet this same average worker is expected to keep spending to turn the economy around. As the government tries to sort the whole situation and get things back on track, ensure your investments are as safe as possible and you are not overexposed. You know we always love to have your input about our videos. So ensure you click the like button, share your thoughts in the comment section below, and watch out for more videos from Savvy Finance. Thanks for your continued support and thanks for watching.